Red Edition, let me start today with a brand new file. It's called the Thinker Thief file. You'll see the getaway. A man walked into this store in uh, Kansas City and he asked for all the money in the cash drawer and apparently the take was so small that he said, I need more money than this. He tied the clerk up, put the clerk in the closet and he worked the till. Three hours later, a policeman came in to buy a cup of coffee and kind of looked at this guy and said, I know you don't belong here. Let me see some ID. And next thing you know, he's going off to jail. You've got to give him some Enterprising fella anyway. Wiser advisor. That'll be me. Here it comes some wisdom for you. The Zeppelin. Have you seen any of those things in old movies like the great big balloons and they were patented in 1895 in Germany, 1899 in the US. They were outlined, you know, with all the little pictures and everything in 1874. They were first flown commercially in 1910 and by 1914 they had carried more than 34,000 part partners, passengers, and the statue of the, uh, or the hand rather, of the Statue of Liberty. This is kind of interesting, you know, it was planned and actually designed to serve as a mooring mast for airships to uh, dock at. Who would have thunk it? I mean, that was a big business and it was around for like almost 30 years. And today we don't even think of it except, you know, it looks a little science abstracty in the movies and everything else. But anyway, that was kind of cool business back then. Here's a man, he's 61 years old, and he has sex charges galore going against him because he's uh, out of Edmonton, Alberta, and he's lured a six-year-old child, and the six-year-old child went and told her parents that this is what this man did to me. And I think the message here, they in turn went to the police. The real message is, is to have your children come to you with things to communicate to talk and in the old days so many people didn't do that and i think that's more important than anything else and i, I guess the good news here is the police went and they arrested him they found out that he's responsible for all kinds of incidents but he had a clean record he was not known to the police he was a manager of a finance company he had been for 20 years people that worked with him were astounded that there was no indication of this whatsoever uh, you know what and it's kind of proven already before they go to court that he really is a bad guy and you know I guess he's lucky that the parents went to the after the little communication thing to the police because if it was me and so many other people like me, once I was convinced beyond a doubt that he was the bad guy, I wouldn't go to the police. Just saying. Now, out of the uh, magazine, most recent magazine from the NRA, it's called The Armed Citizen. They have good stories in there every month. And here I want to share this one with you from this month. The sound of breaking glass in the early hours of the morning woke the resident of a rural home and alerted him to a burglary in progress. Of course, at his home, the resident armed himself with a pistol, confronted the intruder who was, uh, had, a, had a hatchet in his hand, and after a physical confrontation, the resident, the homeowner, took his gun out and fired at the bad guy, shot him in the chest and killed him, and that's a good thing. And that was in uh, Indiana, because if it didn't happen, the homeowner would have been hurt. Certainly, he was being robbed and everything else. Not a nice thing. Guns don't kill people. People kill people. This guy didn't have a gun, but he had a weapon. And if the good guy didn't have a gun, are you listening, Canada? This talk is for you. Okay, Canadian values, let's jump over to that. You got a guy in charge of the Liberal Party. Who is a liberal? And liberals have mind diseases. They all need psychiatric care. You know what? It is a mind disease because let's all be equal as long as I have more. And they all want to hug trees, blah, blah, blah. You know the routine. But, but <laughs> let me get back to this one because I'm digressing. So Trudeau is the man's name. And he says this, my job is to speak with as many Canadians as possible and get out and talk to people about the kinds of shared values we have. Shared values. And he goes on to say, terror groups, you know what, they have values and I speak to them, I speak with them and to them and this is embarrassing. This guy is doing this and, and he's saying it's okay to be a terrorist because you're just a, another little group and, and there's many incidents of him out talking to these people. Shared values. That's what liberals do all of the time. Shared values, I mean, come on, we have values. Everyone has values. Canadian people have values, or they did have, before liberals like him come in and try to distort and change and move all those values around because it's so confusing. Some days nobody even knows what the values are. There's certainly not even a value in a dollar anymore. I'm really digressing now, but, but taxes have even wrecked that. When I grew up as a boy in Alberta, Canada, if you bought something for a buck, it was a buck. Today, it's like a, a mind game. It's confusing everywhere you go. The price says this. How much will it cost? You need a lot of money to get up to the till. There's that digression. Back to this. Marijuana. Dope. You know, former Hershey's plant. It's been closed now just outside of Ottawa for several years. I believe it's several years. In any event, they're closed now for sure. 
470,000 square feet of empty plant. And the company's come along. Smith Falls is the name of the town. But it is close to Ottawa. 1,700 jobs were lost when they closed. And now a group has come along and said, we want to uh, put medical pot in there and grow marijuana and sell. They're in the right place because all the dopes are pretty close to them. The political dopes, at least, they're just down the road. Let me end today with a little story. Here comes the story. My wife left me last Wednesday. She said she was going out for milk and she never came back. Uh, that's terrible. <laughs> How are you coping? Well, I'm, it's not that bad. I've been using that powdered stuff. <laughs> Welcome back tomorrow. We're going to go for you from the right. See ya.